One of the things that I love about a home on wheels is the sense of adventure and excitement that's connected to it. And today we're about to meet an inspiring couple who have created an incredible house bus that's not only their home, but also a very cool business. Hey Isabel, how Hi, are you? Hi Bryce, I'm good, thank you. How are you? Very well, thank you. G'day Norbert, great to meet you mate. Yeah, nice to meet you Bryce. And I am just so excited to check out this bus of yours. Oh, yeah, you're thank welcome. you. <laughs> First of all, can you tell me what it was that inspired you to move into a bus? I think it's you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, I was following your show uh, on YouTube regularly and I was thinking what a great idea to live differently went on trade me and found a bus the first day, so <laughs> But I remember it. the day you sat in front of me and you told me, uh, is it a dream or we're gonna do it? <laughs> Let's do it! <laughs> <laughs> and so we bought the bus and uh, all started like that. That is so exciting and I am so happy to be a part of this journey yeah, because <laughs> what you've built here is just so special. Now you did this yourself, didn't you? That's part of the protocol, so I, I call that protocol, I don't know if it's the right word, but uh, the idea was to declutter, so it was an experiment in three steps. So declutter, live in a bus, explore bus life, so we are on the edge of the end of the second part. So decluttering, using what we had, even the tools, I didn't want to buy any tools, I wanted to do by myself or by ourselves, and uh, I wanted to buy local, and use what we had. So this is the idea of the initial design. And this bus is so much more than just your home, isn't it? Because you've also got your business intertwined with this venture. Yeah. We were yoga teachers, the two of us, and uh, we wanted to share the bus life and yoga, so yoga life. So when we are ready to do it, the first step will be to share yoga with the bus, having sometimes people on board, but people around the bus, it's the best. Yeah. More going from place to place in remote uh, areas and offering yoga to... Yeah, a kind of yeah. mobile studio. And you've actually built a platform on top of the bus to do yoga on, haven't you? Yes, to yeah. do yoga and to chill. Yeah, and to chill. <laughs> yeah, a space like a bus is perfect for meditation. Active yoga is, uh, is more tricky. You have to, to have uh, an area around. But the deck is... Uh, it's a nice place to meditate and to relax. Designing a bus, converting a bus without a deck, it's not a conversion. Uh, you need a deck on, on a bus. I uh, totally agree with you on yeah. that one. Wasted space otherwise. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. so beautiful Yeah, when you're on the deck. So this bus is your home, but the land that we're on right now, there's something quite special going on here, isn't there? Yeah, we were looking for land to feed the bus and we found a community. So we are co-creators of um, new community named Tumanoko. The only uh, requirement was to come in being self-contained and living in a sustainable way. So we are a bunch of people, we are something like 12 permanent residents for now yeah. and we are about 30 co-creators. We are all self-sufficient and self-contained of the grid and uh, living the grid life. And the parking spot that you have for this bus, 130 hectares of land, and you have picked a great spot on yeah. it. Looking out over the farmland, you can even see the water in the distance. This is really special. Where we are right now, there was something like 20 cows, and we're in the middle of the cows, and we're thinking, oh, that's a great spot. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you do for power and water here? So we are self-sufficient in power. So from the beginning, in fact, it's, it had been the first job on the bus. We bought the bus and put the solar panels and um, to run the batteries of the engine uh, to charge them. So four solar panels, 270 volt per panel and uh, a wall system uh, with uh, four uh, house batteries and two engine batteries. So no inverter, uh, gas for the cooktop and the oven. Uh, water heater uh, and we have a diesel air heater. So the water system is basic as well. So the good thing with uh, school buses, you have lockers and room underneath. So I fitted two water tanks, one gray water, one fresh water. There's no black water because uh, we have composting toilet 
and I just have the opportunity to have a, a roof and uh, when I'm settled here so I can collect the water and I can fill by gravity my water tanks with the rainwater. Great way of doing it. Well, this is just such a cool project and I cannot wait to see how you fit it out on the inside. Can we take a look? Yes, for sure. Follow us. Thank you. All right. <laughs> This is so nice. Welcome on board. <laughs> Thank you very much. This, for a bus, feels incredibly spacious. Yeah, it is. Yes, it is. It is 12 meters long, 2.4 wide. Here is the cockpit that we try to optimize when we are settled um, permanently uh, in a place. So we made a kind of desk here. This is part of what we, we wanted to be sure to have. So a certification for two seats and seat belts and uh, being the two of us in front. In front, yeah. Yeah, for the <laughs> scenery and for sharing time together. But the whole concept is like a catamaran. So you have a central corridor, flat floor and two symmetrical space around. We didn't want to have uh, walls until uh, the toilet and the shower. We kept all the windows. We didn't want mm. to close windows and having the scenery is the must. And it looks like you've built in some really nice blinds and some thermal covers as well to help keep the heat in when you want or keep the heat out when you don't want it. Yes, but these curtains, effectively, we can separate the cockpit so we create a space more cozy and, um, and easier to heat. So we have the diesel heater, uh, but still we close the, the curtains and most of the time it's, it's perfect. And then is this area sort of like a lounge or it looks really interesting. What's going on here? So the intention was to do meditation here or, or to have more people to, to sleep. But officially it can't be a bed because uh, you should have a seat belt per bed. So legally uh, there's are only lockers. In fact, it's lockers. It can be a table, a working table you can, and it can yeah. be a bed. And then what's hiding behind the fabric on the ceiling? We have big holes that we call lockers. In fact, there was the AC system that I removed and there was this empty space that I didn't want to lose. So we just put a little net so we can put the duvets, pillows and uh, extra things that we can store it. And we, we are looking for something simple. So we made a fabric curtain and uh, just with a, a bit of rubber. Very cool. And can you tell me about the very special mechanism that you have built to create privacy here? As we wanted to have people on board, we wanted for them to have a kind of privacy. So we designed an indoor tent that you can hang to the little hooks over there. It's hanging there and you can roll it up. You are um, in your own space. You know when you were a kid and you wanted to have a, like a tent around your, your bed, it's exactly that. A private tent inside a yeah. bus. That <laughs> is the coolest idea ever. <laughs> So mind your head, Bryce, uh, you are just underneath the hook for the, um, for the swing. You put a swing in here. Yeah, I wanted a swing, so I asked him to have a swing. <laughs> that is just such a cool idea, and I'm going to have to try that out later. Yes, please. <laughs> and then what do we have further down here? Let's call it the living room. Uh -huh. This is a very flexible design, so symmetrical, but you see it in two versions. So with the table popped up or with the couch in place. So this is exactly the same thing on the two sides. This one is just the table down and uh, this table is just popped up from here. We have lockers here underneath uh, every seat and uh, there's some recycled uh, plywood that I got from my uh, company where I was working. I had a lot of wood from them. I just love the way that you've done this because it builds in so much versatility into the space. You can have two couches if you want, you can have two dining tables if you have people coming over for dinner. And in a lot of ways, you would think in a small space, it was completely superfluous to do that. But you have built in so much functionality. Yeah, exactly. So we have some um, boxes in wood, so we put them here and we move some, some cushion on them and we can lay here yeah. and have a little video here. What a great way of doing it. And then over here, we've got your kitchen. And I really like the way that you've done this. Thank you. So here we have a large uh, bench. We have a fridge and a freezer, but you have also some extension here over the, the fridge. And here you have also a lot of storage for the cans, for the flowers, for the oil, everything. So on the other side, a little sink and uh, a stove. 
Yeah. And full of um, storage underneath. Now this storage looks really unique. What yes. is this? <laughs> it's some um, storage from the airplane of uh, Air France. No way. So second end and uh, yeah, we we really love the the design and the it's really helpful as well. Yeah. And then what do we have behind me here? On the other side, you have the shower, and there was this um, kind of corner round. I didn't know what to do with this uh, angle, so I wanted to to create some room because we needed a lot of storage. So little boxes that we can open like that, and uh, this this grill is uh, the engine grill of the side of the bus, and I use it here. I love that you've included it there. That just makes mm. it so special. Yeah, that's yeah. nice. And then moving behind the kitchen here, we've got your bathroom and shower. But first, I really like how you've used these curtains mm. as separators. We wanted the, the bus look like a tent again. And yeah. uh, we decided to have fabric instead of door. So the ID open space, only one block. And this block was a separation between the two rooms in a way. So living room and main room. And uh, with this fabric doors, you can open the space or close the space, meaning that you have your whole private bathroom, so composting toilet on one side and bathroom on the other side, just closing these curtains. And then around the corner, we've got your shower and basin. And I really like the way that you've done that using the wine barrel. It's very yeah, it's nice. It's very French. Huh? Very yeah, French. <laughs> yeah, the, the funny thing is we bought this barrel local shop and uh, underneath you have the name of the builder so he's French effectively <laughs> southwest of France so a bit of epoxy and we have a, a real job. Beautiful I just think it adds so much character and then through there we have your bedroom. Yes. Yeah. Cool can we check it out? Yeah for sure. sure. Great <laughs> after you. Immediately coming into your bedroom it's nice to see you've got some great storage in here and I love that you have used old beehive boxes. Yes, in fact, um, we were traveling uh, close to Gisborne and we, we saw this amount of beehives, so second hand abandoned beehives. And at the last moment, we found a guy working there and we said, Oh, we are interested in beehives and uh, are you ready to sell them? And he said, It's yours. Oh. And he said, um, They are organics. Colors are genuine colors. We didn't paint them, they were in this shape. Great idea. Does it make your clothes smell a bit like honey? Yeah, yes, a bit. Still. Yeah. It smells wax. Mm. Yeah, and very <laughs> soft. And in this area, it does look like you have incorporated a lot of storage space. Yeah. Yes, underneath. You remember when you were a kid, you wanted to be at the back because you are a little bit higher. So it was the last row of uh, of seats, and you have two steps. So the idea was to fit a bed, so a mat at the right level, and um, just a basic frame, made a frame, and we saved all this, um, this storage room underneath. And I was sure that uh, when you are sleeping at this level, there's not enough privacy, so I wanted to close a little bit. And I started to design one box, then a second box, and I reused this box that was a toolbox in front of the bus. So I inserted it in another wood box, and uh, when you open it, it looks like a, like a safe. Yeah. So everybody's thinking, oh, oh you included the safe. And so no, this is just a toolbox. <laughs> and, uh, but that's funny, yeah. Very cool. And how long have you been living in the house now? About uh. six months, uh, permanently. The great thing is the environment. So meaning that wherever you put your bus, your environment is yours. I really love this space. And I think uh, if I come back to a normal sized house, I would be lost and, and bored. I really like it to be tiny. It's matching perfectly with our way of life. Being the two of us, it's easy. Let's talk about the cost of this build. This is a really unique project and there's a lot that's gone into this. What did this cost to realize? The bus was 8,500 bucks. So working by yourself yeah, for 50 grand, you have a vehicle and a home. I think what you've created here for $50,000 is remarkable. <laughs> Thank you. I think so yeah, as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah. So this is a kind of container. And um, same thing if you speak about yoga life. Bus life is a perfect yoga life because you, you are contained and you are centered in a tiny space and you are safe. You feel safe. Mm. It's learning how to slow down and being content. It's one of the principles of yoga. 
Well, this really is just such a great home that you've built for yourselves. I love all of the quirky features and really unique ideas that you've built into this space. I love the reclaimed materials, the yoga deck. This really is just such an exciting home that you've created. Thank you so much for sharing Thank it with you, me. Thank you, Bryce. Thank you, Bryce. <laughs> My pleasure. Ronald. What Isabel and Norbert have created here is something so much more than a house bus. It's a home, yes, but what they've really built for themselves is adventure, an opportunity to do something completely different and live their lives in a completely different way. They're now part of this amazing community and have this incredible home that they can take anywhere. And that really is just so exciting. <laughs>